This is a short introduction to Clipper, a statistical framework for p-value-free FDR control on high-throughput data from two conditions. This is joint work with my two PhD students, Xinjo and Yilin from UCLA Statistics. Clipper handles high-throughput data, which usually contain a small sample size, which means a small number of replicates and a huge number of features. Clipper requires the data to have two conditions, one is the experimental condition of interest, and the other is the background or negative control condition. Clipper aims to identify interesting features. Here are four example analysis. Pick calling from ChIP-seq data where features are genomic regions. Peptide identification from mass spectrometry data where features are peptide spectrum matches. Identification of differentially expressed genes from RNA-seq data where features are genes. And finally, identification of differentially interacting regions from high c data where features are region pairs. What are interesting features? It may mean enriched or differential. By enriched, the features have higher measurements in the experimental condition than the background condition. For example, in peak calling analysis and the peptide identification analysis, we look for enriched features. By differential, the features have different measurements under the two conditions. This is the case for the identification of differentially expressed genes and differentially interacting regions. The criterion Clipper targets is the FDR, false discovery rate. It is defined as the expected ratio of the percentage of false discoveries among the discoveries. Please note that Clipper doesn't tackle the Bayesian criteria listed here. So Clipper is unique and different from existing approaches in that it does not use p-values. It does not assume parametric distributions of data and it does not require many replicates to work. Clipper has two components, contrast scores and a cutoff on contrast scores. To find the cutoff, Clipper leverages recent advances in the statistics literature. Clipper is robust to data distributions, number of replicates, and the existence of outliers. Here are some cartoon illustrations of the contrast scores. So if we're doing an enrichment analysis with two replicates in the experimental condition and one replicate under the background condition, this is the case. So Clipper defines contrast scores by permutation to create a contrast. And then for the feature, Clipper will summarize its degree of interestingness from the original data and from the permuted data. Then it compares those degrees of interestingness and summarize them into a contrast score. Clipper defines two contrast scores. One is called the max score, one is the different score. And we have done a lot of empirical analysis to choose the default Clipper implement implementation for each scenario. This is the case for differential analysis. Clipper still follows the strategy, but the definition of degrees of interestingness is a little different because for differential analysis, we do not care about the direction. So here's some demonstration of how Clipper works for those four analysis. We compare Clipper with some cutting edge bioinformatics tools listed here. For peak calling, we found that surprisingly, the Homer method cannot really control the FDR. While the max can control the FDR when the target FDR is quite large. Using Clipper as an add-on to each method for setting off the cutoff and calling peaks, we found that we can reliably control the FDR while achieving very good power. For peptide identification from mass spectrometry data, Clipper outperforms mascot in terms of power while maintaining FDR control. Regarding the identification of differential expressed genes from RNA-seq data, we found that DEC2 cannot control the FDR, surprisingly. 
HR can control the FDR. Compared to them, Clipper outperforms HR by having a higher power when the target FDR is not too small, and Clipper maintains FDR control. Looking at the differential expressed genes found by those three methods, interestingly, we see that HR has the most enriched goal terms because it found a lot of DE genes, as we have seen. Clipper found the second most, HR found the fewest. But if we look at the common goal terms that are biologically meaningful, we found those goal terms have the smallest enrichment Q values in the Clipper DE genes, suggesting that the DE genes found by Clipper are most biologically meaningful. We also look at the sets of DE genes that are specifically found by one method, like Clipper versus DC2 and Clipper versus HR. And we found that only the Clipper specific DE genes have enriched goal terms. And furthermore, if we took the DE genes um, enriched in the goal terms enriched in the DE genes found by each method, Clipper has the most enriched goal terms. Sorry, a correction here. This Venn diagram is about the number of DE genes. DEC2 found the most DE genes, Clipper second most, HR fewest. But even though Clipper found the second most DE genes, it has the most enriched goal terms. Finally, for the high C analysis, we look at three high C tools and only deep high C can control the FDR. And compared to diff high C, Clipper has advantages in power for target FDR greater than 2%. To summarize, Clipper avoids the use of p-values or to estimate the null distribution. The key of Clipper is the construction of contrast scores. This makes it flexible and with great application potential in high throughput data analysis. And we also want to voice the importance of validating FDR control because in bioinformatics, FDR is often bluntly assumed but rarely validated in those methods. This is the QR code for our bioarchive manuscript. Finally, I want to thank Xinjo and Ilin for their great work and my lab members and our collaborators for their support.